Every success has a story of modest origins, and Liechtenstein is no exception. Our adventure starts in the early 18th century, when a stroke of luck brought two lands, the country of Vaduz and the lordship of Schellenberger, together and created the conditions for a principality that would defy all expectations. Liechtenstein remained unaffected by the collapse of the Holy Roman Empire and the Confederation of the Rhine. It was just thought to be too poor to warrant attention from neighboring countries. The governing dynasty didn't even visit the principality until 1842 after buying the territory to obtain voting privileges in the Holy Roman Empire. Even after gaining independence, Liechtenstein was simply too small to function independently. Because of this, it later became a member of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and formed a customs union, heavily reliant on the larger economy for food and other essentials. This had the additional benefit of luring Swiss textile manufacturers to relocate to the country. It was only beginning to industrialize. Even though the rugged environment made it expensive to transfer people and things, progress was relatively gradual. But eventually, things got far worse before they got better. Liechtenstein further suffered when the First World War broke out. It was not only cut off from food and supplies from a faltering Austro-Hungarian Empire, it was also grouped in with the Central Powers and subject to the severe economic blockade imposed by the Allied nations despite its declared neutrality. Food ceased from coming in, seasonal employment dried up abroad, and Austria eventually crumbled. The nation's financial structure had collapsed, the Swiss textile sector had left, and now had a mountain of debt from having to pay for the purchase of staples from Switzerland during the war. The previously impoverished citizens of Liechtenstein were now struggling to survive in a world that was changing quickly. In the past, the agricultural industry was the primary generator of Liechtenstein's economy. Many citizens who did not enjoy farming left the country in search of employment in nearby nations like Austria and Switzerland. Similar to what it had done with Austria-Hungary, Liechtenstein was able to enter a union with Switzerland after struggling to maintain its economic independence. Due to the small size of the principalities, the union was made possible by stabilizing one neighbor, establishing a buffer state in a strategic location, and ensuring that the obligations owed to it would be fulfilled. While this had little effect on Switzerland, it had a significant influence on Liechtenstein. This alliance turned out to be a turning point in the nation's history. Joining forces with Switzerland allowed it to obtain exposure to the security and growth prospects of one of the richest countries in the world. Anchoring its economy in a country that was so remarkably stable, Liechtenstein regained access to a far larger and more developed market where its citizens might work, shop, or sell. This made it possible for it to outsource many high-cost administrative and utility tasks. The grave situation improved after Prince Johann II, the country's leader, sold some priceless family heirlooms to pay off the debts. But Liechtenstein's lack of the resources that allowed its neighbors to industrialize meant that it was still limited in its ability to progress. Taxes were reduced to extremely low levels, along with a new constitution that increased political authority for the people and other laws that provided unprecedented freedom for starting and running businesses. The goal was to provide investors with as many options as possible for putting their money into tax-favored arrangements, including domiciliary companies, firms with the Liechtenstein registration, but no actual operations there. Essentially, foreign nationals may set up their businesses in the principality, pay a small fee to the state, and avoid paying considerable greater taxes in their own nations. That's some amazing strategies used by this dynasty to pave its way into the world. The timely opening of the nation's second bank was committed to using strict confidentiality laws to be a safe haven for companies that were part of the collapsed German and Austro-Hungarian empires. With these strategies, Liechtenstein seemed to have created an effective method for economic growth. The Great Depression, a significant financial scandal, a devastating flood, and later the start of World War II prevented advancement from occurring. Well, it did bring with it an immense amount of industrial technical know-how that was put to use during the conflict. Substantial labor shortage developed as a large section of Switzerland's workforce was sent to stand guard in anticipation of a probable invasion. A large number of manufacturers established themselves in Liechtenstein to begin creating more sophisticated and superior products, including ammunition, fine tools, and engine components. The phenomenal economic growth of Liechtenstein is not a coincidence. 
It is the outcome of bold thinking, calculated choices, and an unrelenting quest for excellence. The main elements that propelled the small country to exceptional levels of prosperity. After the war, Liechtenstein had one of the most impressive growth rates of any country. We must comprehend some fundamental features that are particular and how they interacted with external factors in order to be able to decipher exactly what transpired. Liechtenstein is a small state. Having this trait was typically considered a bad quality throughout most of history because it often entailed having to spend an excessive amount of finances on protection or being easily conquered. But in post-World War II Europe, this was hardly an issue and now demonstrated numerous benefits. Being small means that positive economic outcomes often result in favorable benefits. This can be seen clearly by the tax revenue Liechtenstein was getting from its domestic firms. In the 1950s, the profits of 4,000 firms were split among just 12,000 individuals, as opposed to most countries where it would be spread across millions of people and have little impact due to low taxation. As a result, the country was able to maintain very low income taxes while continuing to fund essential governmental operations using tax money from these domestic businesses. Due to the political stability and the strongly pro-business policies put in place two decades earlier, a flood of international investment and capital was released. This was also the time when the geographical disadvantage that Liechtenstein had vanished, thanks to advancements in communications, energy, and transportation. It created the first transportation link to important towns in eastern Switzerland and western Austria, a development that provided the economy of Liechtenstein a notable boost. Because of industrial expertise and international investment, the country was able to rapidly develop into an industrial powerhouse. Manufacturing started off with machine parts and tools, followed by fine instruments, dental equipment, pharmaceuticals, and cutting-edge electrical sensors. The fact that its manufacturing enterprises were forced to compete on a sink-or-swim basis from an extremely early stage in their development was what really made them world leaders. Since the government never provided subsidies to any industry, the country's economy would always remain 95% export-based, forcing the requirement for these companies to be globally competitive. These significant changes in the economy have led to the creation of jobs, from only 4,000 jobs in 1930 to 38,000 in 2018, the employment rates have risen to a whole new level. Today, Liechtenstein has one of the greatest standards of living in the world. Its residents have fulfilling lives backed by strong social welfare system, first-rate health care, and educational facilities. Numerous quality-of-life indices show that the nation consistently has high rankings. After several years of struggle, it has become one of the richest countries with a GDP that is second-highest around the globe. Regardless of its small size, Liechtenstein has managed to cross the finish line of this miraculous journey and currently is the world's largest contributor to its economy with a high standard of living. The success story of this incredibly rich nation tells us that greatness can be achieved, regardless of size or circumstance, through the power of vision, perseverance, and the unwavering pursuit of excellence. Has Liechtenstein's tale of prosperity inspired you as well? What are your thoughts on this? Let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.